maybe that like, and I've had students I tutor where their, their pre-test routine starts the Monday before, if their test is on a Monday, their routine starts the Monday before that Monday. They spend a whole week, they have it lined up like, okay, I'm gonna rework all my homework over a period of four days. So they're literally, all the homework they've done in the last three or four weeks in that chapter, they rework all of it in the first four days of their seven day study window. So in, over a period of four days, a week before the test, they start doing all their homework again. And maybe three days before the test, that's the day that they write all their cookbooks. And they list out all the steps for each type of problem. And they start memorizing it. Or if they're really on their game, maybe they already have the cookbooks they wrote during the course of the chapter, and now they're gonna be reviewing them. And now it's time to do practice tests. And then maybe two nights before the test, that's the night they dedicate to doing practice tests. And not only the practice tests that the teacher gives them for that chapter, but then they'll like cut it up, like literally physically cut it with scissors and mix up the order and then Xerox that. So it, you know, photocopy that. So it, they have a clean test in a different order and see if they can do that practice test. So it's the same problems, but in a different order because they know that that's a crutch is like that they can really do better on test if they've totally really scrambled it, scrambled the order to try and screw themselves up when they're doing the practice. And then the night before the test, maybe that's what they save their real practice test for. You know, I've had students where they make up their own practice tests for like the night, two nights before the test, but then they save like the actual practice test their teacher gave them. They don't even glance at it until the night before the test. And after they've done all their study and all their preparation, they've done their cookbooks, they've done their practice tests, they've redone all their homework, the night before the test, all they do is they sit down and pretend it's a real test and they take the actual practice test that the teacher gave them. Because that's the only way you can know if you actually know are ready for the test, right? So they figure, hey man, why would I bother wasting my one good practice test, my very best one the teacher gave me? Why would I waste that on night three? I want to I save that, the big guns, for the night before the test. And of course, by then they're so well prepped that they're pretty much going to be able to do the practice test. But if there are any confusions, they've just got a couple of little things to button up, right? They can go back to their cookbooks, they can work some more practice problems. But by saving that good practice test till the, till the night before the exam, they're not going to have much to study. If they get one or two wrong, they'll be able to solve that, work some practice problems, use their cookbooks, figure it out, you know? And then most of these students also have a morning routine, which I guess involves just looking over the cookbooks some more, resetting in their minds, okay, this type of problem, what are the steps? This type of problem, what are the steps? But um, I would encourage you, if you're not a math person, if what I'm saying sounds like a lot of work, you know, unfortunately it is. If you really are a math anxiety person, it's going to be a lot of work. But I would encourage you, because usually when people are struggling in math, they're already doing a lot of work, it's just not really paying off. But just watch all my study tips videos. Try using internet math videos, either mine, or if you can find good stuff on YouTube. Um, but do something like that and watch the study tips and see if you can find some techniques that work for you. Because I promise you, anyone, can do well enough in math to get through it, to do what you want to do. If you're trying to get into nursing school, you know, if you're just trying to get like graduate high school and get into a decent college, whatever, you know, sort of level you're at and whatever your goals are, anyone can get a good enough grade in math. I'm not saying everyone can be an A plus student. I'm not saying you'll ever love math. You'll probably always at best be kind of comfortable with it, but you can do well enough. And that's what my site's all about. That's what these study tips are all about. I'm not trying to make an Einstein out of everyone. I'm just trying to show you what I learned um, through my trig class and through all these years of tutoring are sort of like the best ways to get through math so you can do what you actually want to do. So check it out, thattutorguy.com um, slash study tips for more study tips. And hopefully I'll see you there. But good luck in math and don't give up. All right. Oh,